Thank you all for being so patient with us on this Friday afternoon. I'm so excited to see all of you here today for this incredible announcement that we have for you. Um, we have to switch a few things around last minute, but I'm happy to introduce our federal delegation this afternoon. Um, they will be welcoming you all to this, this great event. So we have our Congresswoman, Elisa Blunt Rochester. Our junior senator, Senator Chris Coons. And our senior senator, Senator Tom Carper. If you could all join me at the microphone, please. Come here. What is your name? My name is Landon Bailey. How's everybody doing today? What's your job? I am the senator's personal aide. What do we do together? Uh, we drive all up and down the state and it's 2001 Chrysler Vineyard. How many miles? Uh, well, we are well over 500,000 at this point. And you put most of them on there, haven't you? Yes, the majority. What prepared you for this job? Delaware State University did. Yeah. came to see me in uh, Dover, Delaware. We support uh, Rochester was a member of our team there. Chris was, I think, running W.L. Gore. And uh, Bill DeLauder, the president, brand new president of Delaware State College, came and said, uh, Governor Tom Carper, brand new governor, I think we ought to try to transform Delaware State College into Delaware State University. And working together with the support of our legislature, that's exactly what we've done. Been turning out great young men and women ever since. And literally, he was almost born the, 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 the day, the week, the month, that Bill DeLauder came and presented this idea. So president of creation, Landon Bailey. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That was my thing. Senator Chris Cohn. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Um, thank you so much for being here. Stephen A., welcome to Wilmington, Delaware. We love your passion. We love your energy. Mr. Mayor, we love your leadership. We are so excited about the kickoff of HBCU Week uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, and knowing that you will play a central role there are 300,000 Americans educated at HBCUs across our country. They provide a remarkable educational, cultural foundation and a strong basis for a capable future. We are blessed to have Provost of Delaware State University, the Reverend Dr. Tony Allen with us. Would you please stand, Provost? I was uh, blessed to have a chance uh, just two months ago to introduce a bill, the HBCU Partners Act, uh, in the Senate with my friend and colleague Tim Scott from South Carolina, an idea we got when we visited Claflin together uh, two years ago on a civil rights pilgrimage. It is a bill that would ensure HBCUs get their fair share of access to federal contracts, to federal research, to federal grants, and I look forward to working with my good friend and colleague in the House to make sure it becomes law. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the Delaware Delegation, our Congresswoman, <laughs> Lisa Blunt Rochester. Everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, that's more like it. I am so honored to be here, and um, I'm, I'm so pleased to be joined with the congressional delegation. And as I was thinking about what to say as we welcome you, um, first of all, the first thing is to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, to you and your administration for your leadership and your vision and for understanding the significance of HBCUs to our country. So let's give it up for our mayor and the administration. I also uh, want to acknowledge Stephen A. Smith. Um, I was told that you had like some interest in the NBA draft and that the Knicks did what you, what you wanted. And, and so I, I'm not gonna touch that one. But I will say that we are so honored to have you here because you epitomize the strength, the vision, the, 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 just the entrepreneurial spirit, the things that HBCUs bring about. And you put your money where your mouth is. So we really respect that as well. Thank you for your leadership. different roles that I have and why it relates to HBCUs. As, as Delaware Secretary of Labor under Tom Carper, we have seven million jobs out there that need to be filled and people need to have the right skills to do it. HBCUs provide the right skills. 
When I thought about my role in Congress right now, as our senator said, I was able to help with the farm bill to make sure that there was $40 million in there for those 1890 land grant institutions. There's a role for HBCUs. But I also thought about the people. I thought about my daughter who graduated from Winston-Salem State University, thought about my son who graduated from Morgan State University, thought about my dad who graduated from Winston State University, which you are an alum, my sister, my cousins, everybody. But I was really excited um, about this year getting my uh, honorary doctorate. I am now an official Delaware State University Hornet. Yes. I told him I was already a member of Beyonce's Beehive, but now I'm a hornet. <laughs> but what this is really all about is a business card that I received when I first walked in the door. Tiana, would you stand up? This young woman gave me her business card because she wanted to interview me. She is a junior reporter, entertainment journalist, radio personality, TV host, and a motivational speaker. Tiana has her own card. She's the future. Right. And this young woman wants to go to an HBCU. She wants to go to Spelman. So this is what it's really about. Thank you, Stephen A. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the future of our country. Thank you again to our uh, congressional delegation. Please give them another round of applause for coming and supporting HBC Week. As most of you may know, my name is Ashley Christopher. I am special assistant to Mayor Mike Przicki, and I am co-founder with my colleague Earl Cooper of HBC Week. HBC Week started as a simple idea I had to grow awareness and excitement of HBCUs amongst high school aged youth. As you are probably aware, most HBCUs were founded post the Civil War in response to legal segregation. Black students were prohibited by law from matriculating into predominantly white higher education institutions, so in response to that, we built our own. As a double alum, these institutions are dear to my heart. Growing up on the outskirts of Wilmington, I, also, I often found myself as the only or very few, uh, or one of very few black girls. And my parents always taught me to be proud of who I was, but it was at an HBCU where I truly developed confidence and I came to the realization that I belong and add value to every single room I walk into. My goal for HBCU Week is to spread that same pride and historical significance of these institutions throughout the city of Wilmington. So, I figured we could start by gathering roughly 200 college students in our city county building lobby, together with admissions representatives from local HBCUs for a college fair. This fair was unique because the participating HBCUs agreed that if the students came prepared with the requisite SAT or GPA, SAT or ACT, I'm sorry, and GPA, they could be offered admissions on the spot. So as Earl and I started to promote and plan the fair, we quickly realized that our projected number of 200 attendees quadrupled. So from 200 to almost 800. So we had to quickly make some changes to accommodate our needs. In the end, in 2017, we attracted over 700 kids to the college fair. More than 120 of those students were accepted on the spot and several scholarships, including full rides, were offered. One student, Joseph Lindsay, was afforded a full ride to Lincoln University within 20 minutes of his attendance, and he is flourishing today. I didn't want this to peak here, and I knew we needed to continue to grow and develop this initiative, so I, I got together with, with Earl to figure out how we could continue to expose our kids to HBCUs, but relieve the financial burden um, associated with attending college. And after, you know, that thought process between him and I, it birthed an incredible partnership with our friends at the Camores Company that you'll hear about in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome um, to the 2019 HBCU Week announcement. My name is Earl Cooper uh, from the Wilmington Mayor Mike Przicki's office and also the co-founder of HBCU Week. 
HBCU Week 2018 started out with one goal, to make it bigger and better than 2017. I'm happy to share with you that we achieved that goal. HBCU Week 2018 was filled with great events, but our most impactful event was our college fair, which we awarded over $1 million in scholarship. We also added the first ever HBCU Battle of the Vans, which attracted over close to 7,000 people as far as New York. We then, as Ashley, you can tell, we tried to create more. We said, what can we do next? So we created the HBCU Week Celebration Dinner. This dinner was built to raise awareness of HBCU Week, but also highlights individuals that are achieving social impact in the HBCU community. This award was called the HBCU Week Social Impact Award. This award was given to Mr. Smith, which birthed an amazing partnership that no one could ever see coming. I'm proud to be an HBCU alum, a Morehouse grad, and one of the best decisions I made in my life. Thank you. One of the biggest lessons I learned while being at Morehouse was well balanced, and I'll share the five wells with you, which are well read, well spoken, well traveled, well dressed, and overall well balanced. I now have the pleasure to introduce you the man that built this world-class facility that we're standing in front of, Mr. Rob Buccini, co-founder of DPG. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. Um, about the same time that Earl and Ashley decided to spearhead HBCU Week, we were getting ready to start construction on this building. So we are extremely excited to partner here today with you on this upcoming uh, year's HBCU week as well as we did uh, last year. It's really phenomenal uh, what, what was accomplished with really so few people. Uh, it was really amazing and um, we are flattered to be part of it, flattered to have Stephen A. Smith here and want to thank everyone for attending the event today. Thank you very much. Thank you. As Ashley alluded to, we have an amazing partner um, in the Camores Company, and to share a little bit of words about that partnership. Susan, would you please? Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Susan Kelleher, and I'm the head of the People and Health Services function here at the Camores Company. Um, we are excited to be your partner, too. So you will hear us at the Comores Com Company talk a lot about how important it is to us to be not just a resident in our hometown, but to be an active member, um, to be doing good. Part of that is our commitment and our partnership with the mayor's office to create the Future of Chemistry Scholarship. Now, it started small. <laughs> so last year, our first year of the Future of Chemistry Scholarship, we had five applicants, one amazing winner who's now at Delaware State. This year, a fourfold increase and so many amazing candidates. We had really gone down the path of we'd have a couple scholarships. We have seven. Amazing. And I'm also excited standing here thinking about all these students that are going to be going to these great HBCUs. They are also all women studying STEM, creating the next generation of leaders, yes. of innovators. And we are excited to see these students come back home to Delaware, to Wilmington. We'd love to have them in Camores. Most importantly, we are excited to see the great things that they do. So we are very, very proud to be a part of this partnership with the mayor's office. We see great things. We can see our city every day getting better and supporting our children through the future of chemistry scholarship is one of the ways that we do that. So this is only the beginning. You have the Camores Company, and now you have a lead sponsor in J.P. Morgan Chase. I want to introduce my colleague, Terrence Bowman, to talk about that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good I'm Terrence Bowman. I'm the head of Global Technology, Diversity Attraction Strategy for J.P. Morgan Chase. And I'm so happy and excited to be here today to be uh, representing the firm and bring you greetings as your presenting sponsor for HBCU Week. 
Um, it's really exciting for us because we actually have a program that this falls directly in align alignment with, uh, and it's called Advancing Black Pathways. And HBCUs are a part of that strategy. Uh, there are three components. There's a financial literacy component, careers, and education. So during this week, we hope to infuse all of that, and we want you to be a part of the movement. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate um, your support. And now I'm going to turn it over to the Honorable Mayor Mike Prezicki. I'm still not used to being called Honorable, but uh, <clears throat> it's so good to be here. Uh, God, I'm proud. Uh, Someone asked me how my weekend was going. Sumatra did, for Sumatra. Sumatra. She said, how, how's, how's the weekend going? And I said, it's really been going great. And it started, it started when Rob told me to come down here today. Tandy Washington and I came down here at uh, just short of noon. And there were 800, 800 of our kids, yes, our kids, in this building having a blast, playing soccer, playing basketball, playing everything, having a blast. And I'll tell you, if that doesn't make you feel good, uh, then, you know, you got something wrong. Now, it's, uh, I'm not going to go through everything that's great about uh, my weekend, but it's been really good to us. This morning, uh, I was in the office, and uh, Ashley was getting me ready for coming here. And I said to her, I said, do you know how, do you know how lucky you are that you have a chance to be doing something really really great in your life most people really it maybe it comes along once when you get yourself involved with something that's very very powerful and wind up winds up being bigger than you are bigger than you ever imagined they said that's what you guys have at a very young age you're really lucky and and so you know to put this in perspective you know i i remember when earl and ashley came to me a couple of years ago to talk about this I just had belief in them, and I thought, generally speaking, I think this could really be pretty, pretty good. But I had honestly no idea where this could go. But what the reason that it is so powerful, because it's not just about our kids uh, getting introduced to something very important in their lives. But what it is, is it conveys to our community how much we value, respect, and love them. And that's not something everybody can take for granted. And so. You know, as far as we're concerned, this, this is bigger, that's even bigger than something that's very big by itself. Opening access to, uh, to education for our children, Make, giving them alternatives they never thought, of, thought available to them. And so I can only tell you that um, I could not be prouder to be involved, to be involved with this at all. And so the, um, so last year, then all of a sudden they said, now Stephen A. Smith is coming. I said, holy Christmas, this is, this is really getting big now. And he shows up at this fabulous, this fabulous black tie event that we had, which you can go see on, you can vicariously enjoy it. Just go on our website. It's, it was fabulous. But of course, this guy shows up and knocks it out of the park. And he wasn't the gruff, wise guy you see on television. He was a guy with a giant heart who bled and, and you could see he bought into this thing, hook, line, and sinker. And then they tell me he wants to do more. And so he is here to tell us about the more he wants to do. I don't have to say much more than I've said other than Stephen is the biggest name in sports media today, bar none. And his credibility, his stature, lends enormous uh, stature to our efforts here, and we're deeply grateful for him for being here. So Stephen, come on up and make an announcement to make us all excited and even proud. Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, <clears throat> When I came here a few months ago, obviously it was an honor and privilege to be a part of it. You talk about HBCU, I can't put in the words uh, what my association with an HBCU has done for my career, for what, what it has done for my life, the friends that I have made, uh, the support that I have received, the people who have believed in me from day one and has never wavered in their support of me. I always refer to Mr. Teddy Blunt here, uh, who's, who's like a father figure to me. Uh, 
is always there for counsel, always there for advice, always there to provide the level of support. And obviously, we all get that from the late, great Clarence Big House Gaines, our basketball coach. I would say his because he played while I tried to play. <laughs> you know, you crack your kneecap in half your first year at the university. You know, you're just lucky to keep a scholarship for crying out loud. Uh, but the reason why I never hesitate to remind folks that I, that I tried to play for Winston-Salem State was not just because I was on a basketball scholarship, but as Teddy would attest to, it's the relationship that I had with Coach Gaines. Um, I was one of the rare individuals that was consistently in his office day after day after day receiving lecture after lecture <laughs> after lecture from this man. Um, and one day he just looked at the rest of the team during practice and he said, damn it, he wants to be somebody. And that was his standard. And it was quick, you, you quickly learned that the people that Coach Gaines communicated with, albeit cussing him out most of the time, <laughs> going off and what have you, it's because that was his way of showing you love. It was those he did not talk to that he didn't have much use for because he was very, very big on focus he was very, very big on determination, and he was very, very big on having an agenda that extended beyond oneself. And one of the things that he made me promise, because he always believed in me, he made me promise that I would never forget the university, that I would never forget the fact that I was going to be a graduate of an HBCU, and that in my own way, whatever way that may be, I would give back. And so it's with that in mind that I've done everything that I've tried to do. My accomplishments, my goals, the success that I've been fortunate and blessed enough to have accomplished, it's with that goal in mind. Being in a position where I would resonate, have an impact, and also being in a position to give back. That's why I don't apologize for trying to get paid. Okay? I'm, I will never apologize for that. I'm a capitalist to the heart, at least fiscally. Not socially, you know, not, you know, not other than this, but Money-wise, oh yes, okay? And so I just think it's important to recognize that, to know that I understand where I come from. And as a result, when I came and I spoke at the banquet the other, you know, a few months ago, and they talked to me about HBCU week, myself and my team came up with the idea of making sure that number one, I was gonna be a part of it, and I volunteered to be an ambassador for HBCUs because my objective and my agenda is to bring attention, is to bring attention to HBCUs. And we have a lot of folks that are public figures, but they're not on the airwaves 20 live hours a week for a minimum of 240 days a year. And in my case, I'm on the air. I think the number they tallied was 345 days a year I am on the air. Even when I am on vacation, I've received calls. Breaking news, something like that's happening. Stephen A, we need you. And I'm usually there. I'm known as being a workaholic. I'm known as grinding. So that's what I do. And that's one of the reasons why I took it upon myself to jump at the opportunity to play an ambassador's role for HBCUs. Because we have to understand what this is about. This is not just about reminding folks about the value of being from an HBCU. It's about encouraging those to participate. It's about galvanizing, not just the HBCU community, but those on the outside to come in and volunteer. Because in the real world, it's not all black, it's not all white, it's not all Latino, Native American, Jews, gent it doesn't matter. It's everybody. You're going to have to deal with the real world. And so as a result, any kind of participation that you can generate from those on the outside only buffers what you're trying to build with an HBCU. If you just stand alone and try to do it by yourself, whatever level of success you achieve will be nothing compared to what you could achieve. One of the examples that I consistently use when I'm talking about it is that I always say about my own individual career, which is emblematic of what I'm trying to accomplish here, being a part of all of this, is that I have never, ever, ever been interested in just black appeal. I'm interested in mass appeal. I want everybody. I don't want just one group. I want it all. And the greedier you are, the more you'll likely get. Now, you may not get everything, but you're going to get more than if you isolate yourself to one specific group. One of the other things that I did, which is an announcement that I'm about to make right now, is that I went back to Winston-Salem 
I'm sorry, what's the sale? I went back to ESPN and first take will be here for HBCU week, live right. September 20th. Woo! We're doing we're doing first take live right here, September 20th. Uh, for HBCU week. It'll be Friday. First take will be here live. Yes. So I'm bringing the show to town. Yep. Um, and that's not the only HBCU stop I intend on making. Um, ESPN also is known for contributing to such causes, especially when it's spearheaded by one of its talent. So needless to say, I may be back with more news in the weeks to come in terms of ESPN's overall participation with that as well. This is just the beginning. If you know anything about me, I don't stop. I rest, I get some sleep when I can, but I don't stop. And I hope that everybody maintains that attitude and understands it. To whom much is given, much is required. We all know that. And we all know that we've got a younger generation out there that, we, that needs our assistance in every way imaginable. When you give somebody else something to have, they value life a lot more and they value everything that comes along with life a lot more. It's when someone has nothing to lose that the world gets more and more dangerous for us all. Because if somebody's mired at the bottom and they don't see any hope whatsoever, how do you expect them to act? What attitude do you expect them to have? What do you expect them to do? And we haven't even gone in the category of achievement. Well, I'm on a mission to change all of that, to do my small little part. So I appreciate y'all's participation. I hope you appreciate mine. And as far as I'm concerned, let's get this party started. <laughs> well, it was, uh, again, we wanna thank each and every one of you for coming. Uh, we are super excited about the announcements that were made um, just to run it down, again, we are proud to announce J.P. Morgan Chase as our presenting sponsor of the 2019 HBCU Week. We are proud to be hosting that event right here in the Fieldhouse, so we want to give a round of applause for Rob and their crew. BPG, we are also proud of Comoros and their partnership. It is just amazing. We have some of our future chemistry scholars. If they're in here, just raise your hand. No, we had a couple. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Right here, live and in the flesh. And I just wanted to highlight, I'm so proud and thankful for the Comoros Company um, and the partnership that we formed with them. They actually made a commitment of $400,000 to the HBC Week initiative. And these scholarships, these scholarships that they are giving, they are $40,000 a piece. So if, if our Future of Chemistry scholars could stand, I don't wanna steal your thunder for, for Jane, I mean, July 15th, because we have another ceremony, but please stand and be recognized. Congratulations, congratulations. Again, we have Mr. Stephen A. Smith as our official ambassador. Woo! And we are so proud again to be bringing HBCU Week here. September 20th, First Take Live will be right here. If you're looking for any details, please go to hbcuweek.org. Uh, follow us on Instagram, they'll have all the details as well. It's HBCU Week. Um, uh, we also have some t-shirts and food, so please partake. Um, I know Mr. Smith will be taking a few questions. Okay. If, if there isn't any questions, well, yep. you have a question? Oh, yeah, I got a question. Um, uh, my name is Mark Millette, and at this moment, I'm currently at Winston Salem State. So basically, I heard stories about you being a sports management major with Dr. Felder. He's still here. I don't know if you. Oh. No, I know Dr. Felder. I'm sorry, I know Dr. Felder, but I was a mass comm major. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but I know Dr. Felder. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So basically, I was just had a question about, you know, being the, basically your experience, because I lived up north my whole life, and going down south and being in a whole different environment, 
and going to an HBCU, it's kind of more welcoming um, to work in. You know, I talk different and everything like that. So my question is, you know, how can you speak on more so your experience? Well, my experience was fantastic. Um, it helped that I was on the basketball team, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I would tell you that the second I got there, for example, my roommate was a guy by the name of Mark Turner. Mark Turner was some fly guy. All the ladies loved him. You know, I was in college. I was 5'10", 130 pounds. Needless to say, nobody was looking at me. Okay? So, you know, you would think that that sets yourself up for, for not the greatest experience in the world. I could not have been more wrong. Within a month, I had a crew of dudes that were my teammates. Most of us, you know, almost immediately hit it off. And then when you think about it from the perspective, and that's what I'm not against, I want to be very, very clear, I'm not against community college or anything like that. Because an education is an education. That's the first order of business. Because when you're educated, you got to remember what an education means. It's not only showing you, you can read, you can write, you can comprehend. That's validation because every employer is looking for that. But it's also, it also speaks to your level of commitment and dedication. A lot of times you might not be qualified for a particular position, but because you got the education and you showed the commitment, somebody wants to take you on board and train you anyway. Because whatever level of expertise school gave you that doesn't mean that's what the mayor wants one of you know one of the senators wants or anybody else they want what they want but they'll know your potential they'll have an idea of what you're capable of because of the education that you received but also when you're on campus i cannot tell you the difference between taking the train and the bus to school during the day and then coming home as opposed to being right there on campus with thousands of other students. So the, the, the opportunity is there to cultivate relationships and build your own friendships and build your own brotherhoods and brother and sisterhoods and things of that nature. The opportunity is there. And once you really master that and you learn, you learn to gauge who's the anchor, who are the anchors in your life, the people that are there to keep you down, who's the people that cheer, serves as your cheerleaders, you know, to lift you up from that abyss when you're down because sometimes the test was hard, sometimes you had so many obligations, you didn't have time to study as much as you would have liked, you tried to cheat and go the cliff note version route instead of really <laughs> hunkering down and studying and then you found out that didn't work for you. That's a whole bunch of stuff. You laugh because you've done it already because I know because I did it already. These things happen, but in the end, you got a roommate, you got a teammate, you got a classmate, you got somebody like that that's there to say, come on now, let's get it going. This is what's going to be required. And more importantly, we talk about peer pressure sometimes as being a negative. Sometimes it's a positive. Because guess what? If I'm hanging around with a bunch of brothers and sisters that's getting A's, but I'm getting D's, I look like the idiot of the crew. So maybe I need to step up, step my game up so I can belong to be a part of that crowd. That kind of peer pressure ain't bad. Sometimes it's good. So yeah, you're in a new environment and you don't have the luxury of turning around and going home when school is over. You on campus, you on in, in a dorm room, you got your own responsibilities. Your parents have trusted you to handle your business without their daily, hourly supervision. All of those things can be minuses if you don't handle it right. But being in that environment, particularly if you love it, incentivizes you to do the right thing. I was on a basketball team. I cracked my kneecap in half my very first year, two months there. But I loved Winston-Salem State so much that even when my mother's insurance couldn't afford to keep me in Winston to get my rehab, thereby forcing me to have to go back to New York to rehab for eight months, I still came back because I loved it that much. I wanted to be around the fellas. I wanted to be on campus. I wanted to be in North Carolina. This is the experience that we're talking about when we talk about HBCU week. It's not just, of course you want to get your education. That's got to be the number one priority. Of course you're looking for an opportunity to springboard yourself to another level. But the enjoyment that you get in the process is something they don't talk about in the streets. They don't talk about when you're younger and you're just running around or you're going home every day. That process is everything because everything in life involves a process. But if you can find a process that you enjoy, then it makes the process easier to endure. And then before you know it, even when you accomplish it, 
you might not be happy because you don't you didn't want the process to finish i graduated in december of 1991 and six months earlier Dr. Mr. Robert Devon, who was the head of the telecommunications department at Winston-Salem State, God rest his soul, because he passed away a few years ago. He had to talk me out of getting left back. I actually wanted to skip classes <laughs> to get left back so I could stay in school an extra year before hitting the workforce, because I didn't want to leave school. That's how much fun I was having. See, these are the kind of things they don't tell you about, but it happens. It happens at the right institution. It happens when you're surrounded with the right people. It happens when you're at an HBCU. Can we get the mayor to come on up. No, no, please, come on up, come on up. Come on. Just, just come, come. I got you, I got you. I wanna give this man a big round of applause for allowing us to do this. As he said, again, we're just very grateful. And again, we wanna thank each and every one of you for coming. Please stay uh, alert. Check out hbcuweek.org. Again, thank you so, so much. Have a great day. Yep. Bye.